Hello there folks, it's Connor and I'm taking another look at another ship in Fractured Space. And it is a ship that came with the latest update. And the ship is the Interceptor, the Titan Defense System's new attack craft. And oh my good god, does this thing not look sexy, look at it. Look at that giant Gauss rifle there in the port side of the ship. Is it port side, the left side, is it? Mm-hmm. Still trying to get to terms with these, uh, you know, port side and starboard and all that there. Nautical nonsense. So yes, it's a Titan Defense Systems attack craft. It is very, very good, but it's it's new and it does take a player who's experienced in using it to do well with it. And I've played about four or five games with it this morning and it's, well, it's fun. It deals a lot of damage. I mean, the damage potential is off the charts, but, right, first let me tell you how it performs. I mean, because you can see the guns here, of which there are how many of these guns on the front? One, two, four, five, six. So six guns on the front, so you can see them here. So first off, this thing, you know, it's best to use this thing head on, and not only because this giant Gauss rifle has a really, really small arc of fire, but the majority of the weapon systems are located on the front. So let's take a look at the loadout and get a better understanding of how it operates. So the rotary cannon, that's the six guns we saw on the front. They can do a lot of damage, but they overheat. And whenever they overheat, there will be a 10 second cooldown before you can use them again. So use this thing in bursts, right? Try to get around to your enemy's sides, weak points, and if the enemy ships have taken sufficient damage on, you know, a part of the ship where they're taking increased damage to that part, fire at that part because you will do increased damage, obviously. Now this thing, it's your main weapon of choice. Well, not, it's not of choice. I mean, this thing is your main weapon that you have to use. But the cooldown and the overheating, it can throw new players off. So you really need to take into consideration how to use this thing and train yourself with it. So on to the Ghost Driver, which is this massive gun here on the side of the ship, of which there is only one. In short, this thing fires nukes at a super incredibly high speed, and it does AOE damage, it does damage over time, and, well, it does an initial big-ass bit of damage. So, it's, it's awesome. I mean, just watching this thing, hearing this thing, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, the effect for it, the particle effects and stuff, is it's amazing. So this would be your big attack before you engage the enemy with your rotary cannon. Hit them with this, and then hit them with your rotary cannon. In target, in, target inhibitor, uh, this is useful for escapes and just, you know, if you're going against multiple enemies, hit them with the target inhibitor, and what it does is disables their abilities. It's really useful, so... You know what, I'm going to read out the description for this one because it's a little bit more difficult to explain. A directional radium which, when aimed at the enemy, reduces their targeting range for a limited period of, t period of time, affecting systems such as missiles, drones, targeting blinks, and smart weaponry. This sev severity of the reduction is dependent on how long the radium is stationed on the enemy, which a moderate percentage decrease for every attack. Having a bit of, you know what, I should be wearing my glasses here. I really should. Dumb fire weaponry can still be fired without incident and enemies can regain control of their targeting software by closing the distance, making this weapon suited to mid-long range engagements. This is quite useful in helping enemy ships who are quite low on HP escape from death. Um, there is, it's, it's a very specialised ability. Uh, I have not fully come to grips with the best ways to use it. It's pretty much just what it says in the description of the ship here itself but concussion missiles uh, well it says here they slow and disable the enemy's ability systems for two seconds and have a really short cooldown so you know what just keep these things firing at whatever target you're attacking and you'll do well fighters it's nice to have a squadron of fighters and the engine which just gets you moving uh, you know what, I have a kind of love-hate relationship with this ship in the few games that I have played with it. If you're working with a team member and you're able to, you know, just cut the enemy off and kind of like hunting down some prey in the 
savannas of Africa. You'll work well and better with a teammate. Now it doesn't it can't take that much damage, it only has where is it? Ten thousand HP to begin with at level one. But even so leveling up to level nine, it, it still won't have that much health, especially in comparison to larger vessels. And I would say that this thing is better for hunting larger vessels. I mean like the last review I did, let me see, where is she? The the gladiator. See if you can get the oh, where's the taking one? Oh, there we go. If you can get the interceptor above oh what's so happening with my mouse? I don't know, this game is quite buggy of late. If you can get the ship the interceptor above or behind or below or directly in front of this big thing, you're gonna tear it apart because you know its arc of fires for the gladiator is either on the starboard side or the port side. If you're not at one of those angles or whatever, one of those sides facing the interceptor, you're going to have a hard time because look, there's only two guns here to defend the rear. And, you know, whenever I did a review of this ship, not really a review, just an overview, there was a gun here, two guns on the front that I missed because, well, I was looking at the left side of the ship and there aren't any of those guns. I mean, look, two in the front and that's it. Now, it can outflank bigger ships. I mean, by the time other ships have turned and tried to turn around to face you with their weapons, this thing is wrong ship, derp. This thing will have moved on to another position. It is fast. I mean, this thing is really, really fast. But again, the biggest problem is your guns overheating. With ships like the Reaper, you're able to just continually keep firing and cut your enemy down awfully quickly, especially in tandem with friendly forces, but this thing, the overheating kind of ruins its damage output, but you know what, it's better if I show you in a game, so let's see if we can get into one, so there's a game in EU, they're warming up, I hope the team is not full of lemons, but you can't help it, new players are starting all the time, and well there is a training system which I would highly recommend you try out, otherwise you're not going to have a freaking clue of what's going on and you will hold your team back, it's not like World of Tanks where you have 15% and people can pick up the slack. Not at all. So here we are. Oh. Yeah, lag spikes will occur on the EU servers quite a lot. They're just... I don't know if it's because they're worse, they're older, they're just unstable, but compared to EAS servers and even Asian servers, they just seem shit. And you're, of course you're in the EAS and Asian servers, you're going to have a lot of latency lag, a high ping, but it's better than having these FPS lag specs all the time. And I have asked other players on the forums and the discussion board on Steam, and yes, they get it as well. They've noticed it. But the developers don't seem to want to do anything about it or are holding off until the game's release. I don't know. But it's highly, highly, highly annoying. That's another one of the new ships, the Persecutor. Also looks pretty damn awesome. I think I... Did I forget to mention how awesome the ship looks? I hope I didn't. I mean, that's the first thing I will say whenever I look at these things is how awesome they look. But there's something about every single Titan ship looking absolutely class. And like they're going to do the business. Now, let's just show you the awesome effects from the Gauss Driver. It pretty much super accelerates a nuclear warhead into the side of the enemy vessel. So that is awesome. The little ripple effects and heat distortion and stuff that comes from it. Right. I'm just going to take a little bit of a drink of water before the festivities commence because I've got a bit of a dry mouth here. You know what I'm saying? Ah, there we go. Okay, so. I mean, the teams are pretty badly laid out here. You'll notice that on the enemy team they have three heavies, three capital class, and that's not a good thing at all. It is not a good idea to have three capitals on one team, nor is it a good idea to have two supports in one team, which we have. We have a protector and a sentinel. But the sentinel is... It's, it can do more damage than most support vessels. There's our little protector. I believe I played with that guy yesterday. Lord Zears. He's, he plays quite a lot, just like myself. We have a watchman. Phone you really really need a sniper they have four capitals really oh this is going to be a turkey shoot right here we go i'm going to jump to alpha 
Now, I hope I can get an opportunity to show you guys this thing's speed and action, especially against possibly a gladiator or what, are, what else do they have? Adventurer or Colossus. Oh, they have a destroyer as well. Ah, the destroyers. I love the destroyer. See the guns in the destroyer? Absolutely immense. I love the thing. Alright, now there are three here in Alpha. Now, there's something I've noticed about this ship. See, whenever you start it up and you stop pressing the forward or the back key, it continues to move for a while, so, you know, its acceleration is pretty damn good. I should have did a video just showing off all the, you know, the new ship, or not models, ship models, what do you call them? Station models, because look, things have finally been textured and skinned, which is awesome. Right, enemy destroyer sighted. I am going to send my nuke at him. He's going to take a bit of a sting here. Oh, did it hit him? I believe it did. Yes, he is taking damage over time. If you look at the top left of my HUD there, you can see the little flame icon. That is showing that my thing is going to overheat, so I'm going to stop firing for a moment. And then they seem to be focusing fire on me, but I'm going to continue to move here. Try and get around the back of this destroyer. Uh, but he's got too much armor. It's going to take a combined effect and effort to take those guys down. So I'm going to pull away here. Get behind this asteroid. Oh, and they're in pursuit. That fighter wing is in pursuit. God damn it. I'm going to have to jump out of here. I'll jump back to base and then I will jump back in. Jumping to home. Right, an upgrade available. I will jump back in. Why is... Hmm. Right. You know what? There's a hunter. To smaller vessels like destroyers and attack craft, you are going to deal a hell of a lot of damage compared to... If you're attacking heavier craft, like capitals, now I'm going to have to turn around here. Otherwise, I'm going to take a bit of a pounding, get all guns facing him, unleash the pain. Just watch as his health drops. Notice those leg specs? Welcome to the EU fucking server. Which they're not going to fix. Engage flak. I don't want my guns overheating, so stop firing for a moment. And then, continue to fire. Let's see if we've done it. There we go. That guy is down. Oh, there's that destroyer. There's our friend. Ghost driver is reloaded. Commence firing. Everything this ship can do is amazing, but it does take a specialized player who understands how the thing works. Destroyer down because we are working together with teammates, but that is not going to help. I'm going to have to jump to Vita because there are two enemies on top of one of our guys, and that is not good. So I'm going to jump to Gamma and then pop in behind them here. Now I can't actually see them at Beta. Did they jump out? I don't understand why they would do that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to help push Beta for a while. They don't have any stations or anything captured. I mean Ah, oh, there's one of them there. I mean, I, I don't understand how players would just sit there for I mean, I've seen players jump into A or B at the start of a game and just sit there for 10 minutes in the home base. I don't understand it. Why do people do that? It really confuses me. There's the hunter again. Let's hit the destroyer with our inhibitor. Charge up the Gauss driver. Charge it up. Get ready to fire. Fire. Gauss driver out. There we go. See, damage has increased. He is going to go down. Is that a flagship? Looks like one of the enemy ships left. The ship can now be yeah. The venture. No, not the venture. What was it? So we. Huh. Fire our concussion missile. Slow the guy down. It would be nice if you didn't get in my way, Emmy. There we go. Another target down. My fetters after those bombers. Going to jump to Gamma. Alright, here we go. There's that destroyer. 
You'll see that the fire, rid of fire isn't as good from the side, which is why. Uh oh. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Ghost driver, loading, loading, arming, arming, charging, charging. And it's out. Oh, I cannot fire, I can't do anything. I have been disabled. God damn it. Right, put a point into attack there. Can't see. Why are you guys? Why? Why are you guys there? Go to G. Go to G. Darn noobs! Look, we still haven't captured that station. Oh, this is going to be a Connor Rage video. I understand they're new, but I also fucking understand there's a training mode. There is a training mode. It says all over the freaking main page, over the title screen. It says everywhere. It says all over the, I'm assuming it says all over the discussion board as well. This human race of ours, I wish I was living on Mars with people who understood basic concepts and stuff. Good stuff, Watchman. You're doing one hell of a job, Erlach. One hell of a job. Send our fighters after those swarm fighters. Oh, looky! There's nobody on Alpha. Whatever shall I do? I guess I must pull back and stop them from capturing our base. I'm gonna take some fire here. We're in range. Free. Right, jump into Alpha. Luckily, my Ghost Driver is still ready to be fired. What is it? What is it? It's that freaking Hunter again. That Hunter and me keep running into each other. Loading Ghost Driver. Charging. Don't you move. Don't you move. Firing. Ghost Driver out. He took a direct hit. He must have known I was about to fire that. I mean, I was looking dead on him. I wasn't firing. I had slowed down. I mean, this thing completely stops whenever you're charging the Ghost Driver. Oh, look. He jumped. He jumped out. All we can see is some debris left from his, his hull. Right. Moving to cap. How are they getting pushed back when they're all there? I mean, I don't understand. No, I'm not helping you. You're an idiot. You are an idiot. I'm going to have to push a lane on my own because you guys haven't got a clue what you're doing. Please, for the love of God, use the training mode. That's what it's there for. Seriously, people. I'm putting out some serious fire on to the top of him. Hopefully I will cut through. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, there's two of them. That is not good. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. That hunter's back. Yep, that hunter's back. Look at him. The jammy bastard. God damn it! And look, some guy comes in to help me just as I die. Maybe it will be useful to have three in one when you get two in the other. That's usually the best way to let a team out. You know what? I need to get a few of you guys who actually know what you're fucking doing to get into a game with me and... Uh... Well, play a few games together. Because this is... the uh, This is painful. This is incredibly painful. Hello, Sentinel. Looks like you've been sitting there for a while. Maybe I'll just chill out with you and let the team... Oh, no, you're moving. That's alright. I'll move with you. I'll move with you. Watchmen seems to be doing well, but it's hard to not do well in a Watchmen. I mean, it's a, it's a sniper. Oh, direct hit. Right, use this thing's speed to catch up. You know what, actually, screw it. I, I, look, I'm an attack craft, right? I am a fast, mobile attack craft that can do a lot of damage, and I'm being forced to capture stations because my team hasn't got a clue what they're doing. Look, 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 look at B. I mean, the sniper's still not fucking facing the direction of which the guy or enemy dude is in. This game makes me more angry than any other game out there. I mean, seriously. The player base is, I, I, you know what, I don't understand because whenever this game first came out, 
there wasn't much explained or anything, but people still did well. Everybody worked as a team. Ugh. And I'm really, really sad to say that this is how 90% of games are in this. It's just fucking rage fests where nobody does what they're supposed to do. Especially if you're a player who is quite high rank and has been playing the game since it first arrived on Steam. Then, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to... I'm coming here because, well, nobody else is... That's your turn, mate. You're about to take a goss nuke right in the fucking face. Tell me how it feels. He has disabled me. I cannot use any abilities. Well, he just continually hits me with his flak. Put my abilities back up. It's time for you to start taking a bit of a pound of me, right? Kirito with a douchebag. How do you like my guns? How do they feel? Do they burn? I hope they do. Is there anybody here helping me? Oh look! They're all over there helping. <laughs> Please guys, start playing this. I don't want to play with these bloody potatoes anymore. Look at them! Look at them! They choose to attack the target with the highest health and leave their teammate Look, even the healer! And I was there fighting these guys before they were. I was here attacking and killing one other target and then almost killing another while they all derped about. Now please, if any of you watch this video, go to the training fucking room and play it. Learn to play the game before you play the game. Now Lord Zears, he, I know that he is a somewhat competent player, I have played games with him before. But, I mean, no matter what the game, if you play a healer, heal the target with the lowest health. It's simple. And here they are, our fucking station now, our home base. We're just vastly outclassed. We, we really are, that's all it is. I mean, see the Sentinel? You should be playing a DPS. Even then, with one protector, we'd be doing fucking awesome. I mean, it's four freaking capitals on Hunter. We should be wiping them out. We should be raveling and rolling in the amount of blood we will spill. We should be spilling another attack there. Then I'll get a defense. Seems like a pretty... Eh... Uh, go... To, and now... Surrender? No, I don't think so, mate. I'm not surrendering just because you're a potato. If it overheats, it overheats. Oh, that's a destroyer. That is a destroyer. That is a destroyer. I am fucked. Damn it! God damn it! That's another thing. Whenever it does overheat, Whenever you're in a like a tight situation where your concentration is impaired because of well being shot at, you, it, it, your attention is diverted from the overheating, which is another thing. Right, somebody has went to uh, Why is that guy? Ca Here's another tip: don't try to jump out when you're being attacked. You take like fifty percent more damage. It, it's crazy. It's, it's the stupidest thing ever. And I see people doing it way too much. Do it like I did in the start. Get behind an asteroid, get behind some cover, then jump out. Don't be acting a potato. My, my head hurts, guys. My head hurts. I mean, this happens way too often. I should have waited. 
even you know just added it out the time that I was sitting there waiting for a 20 plus lobby level 20 plus lobby lobby the enemy has captured a station. Right, let's take this guy down enemy all right where's the old one I saw somebody else here I think it was the hunter did he teleport out what's who's that there Right, there's the Colossus. Right, so that doesn't seem to... Might look like there's just some bars, but that looks to be a... Completely flat surface, okay. What's firing at me now? Is that that gladiator, is it? Right, you guys handle that there, right? You guys just sit there dropping about. I'm gonna go and capture the base. Avoid Information with the package. We have completed our jump. This thing is so beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. All them curves and stuff. All them bloody thrusters. So good. No chance of capturing G. Yep, they've already started capping. Station acquired. Right, let's move on. Fighters also for the Titan defense system look awesome. Alright. No idea what my team's doing. Oh wait, all four of them are trying to kill one target. Okay. Uh, they're just going to let the enemy keep pushing in and jumping into our base. Well, at least I'm not doing it from Alpha anymore. I'm going to push forward here, take this station, and possibly move on to take their Alpha, and then... I'm just telling these guys, to everybody push. Uh... Yep, potatoes. Potatoes all. Apart from the Sentinel, we have a far better team set up here. A Raven. The Raven does massive damage. Protector is a really good healer. Watchman is a, an amazingly good sniper. And I'm the Interceptor, which is new and potentially overpowered, and yet we're still getting our asses kicked by four heavies. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I mean, it's not even worth mentioning. But at least they get to show you a little bit of how the ship can operate. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever, I'm done. I'm done, I'm not jumping back. It's not worth my time. Yeah. One guy saying, well, how are you killing me whenever I'm shooting at your side? Well, you see, kiddo. What tends to work with Battleship is that when you're firing at whenever you're getting attacked from the side, that's usually because all their guns are on the side. That's the way it is with historical naval vessels, that's the way it is with battleships in general. All their guns are going to face to the side. Uh, my head hurts. Uh, seven kills, second most kills in the team, four deaths, because I was trying to push lanes and capture gas pieces. Gas stations, whatever you want to call them. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I want to play a game where people know what they're doing. The internet ruined it all. The internet ruined everything. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, nice ship. Potentially overpowered, but you don't get to show that off whenever your team's full of lemons and potatoes. You see, a potato is slightly more retarded than a lemon. I have to get that point across. Some people won't understand. Uh, yeah. Commodore 2, whatever. I don't even have a clue what any of the ranks in this game mean. But, you know what? See if you guys ever do pick this up and you've never played it before. Go to Launch, right? Then go to this. Okay? It says they get a reward for completing the training. Well, there's another thing. There you go. I mean, You've got a reason, an incentive for trying it. I've never done it because, well, it wasn't there whenever I started playing and I've learned to play the hard way. 
But if the easy way of learning how to play is there, and you get a free ship, and you get some free platinum, and you get some free credits, do the training. Do the proving grounds. It'll, it takes about 10 minutes. And there's two parts, so 20 minutes are your day. 271 players online. About I'd say about 50% of them are seasoned players who know what they're doing. The other half are lemons and potatoes. But there we go, guys. That is the Titan Defense Systems Interceptor Attack Craft. It's very nice as long as you work as part of a team. As long as your team know what they're doing. You can hit enemies from the side, kind of like an ambush rule. You know what? Actually, this thing wouldn't be suited for an ambush rule because, well, it doesn't have any jump abilities or it doesn't have any stealth keep abilities. So, if the enemy see you, and I can guarantee that seasoned players of the game will know that this thing is a real threat just because of this Gauss rifle here and especially because of the, uh, what are they called, the rotary cannons? Yes, that's what they are. These things can put out an amazing amount of damage as long as you allow them to cool down now and again. So, this thing probably will be shot at pretty quickly by seasoned players, but in team fights where it's one against three, this thing is just going to die. It has too little armor, too little health. And in a situation where you're in one lane on your own trying to push, and that you have to be in that lane to stop them from capturing your main facility that will allow the enemy to jump to your base, you're not going to do well. No matter what you do, you're not going to do well. Unless the enemy team don't know how their guns work and just allow you to cut them to pieces, you're not going to do well. You need support. You really do need support. Uh, I mean, it has a lot of potential. I mean, look at it. It has this ability that pretty much slows down and stops a lot of enemy abilities, and that's awesome. Missiles to slow the enemy down and stuff. Ghost drivers do a massive amount of damage on the enemy ship. Rotary cannon that in itself does a massive amount of damage if fired from the front and head on. I mean, this ship should only be used head on. I mean, look at it. The Ghost rifle has a really small arc of fire. The guns on the front, they're that's where most of your guns are so it's a nice ship it, it's a very specialized vessel of course I mean obviously I've started to pick it up but I still need a few games before I know how to play this thing to the best of its ability but thank you all very much for watching uh, hit the like button it gets me a little bit more popularity and notoriety also I have a patreon which I will put in the description below you don't have to go to it but once I have enough patrons uh, I will be removing ads from my channel I'm part of Polaris oh, not Polaris what are they called well it's the company that owns Polaris I'm part of Polaris you know like big youtubers and stuff like uh, Total Biscuit Jesse Cox not saying they're big I'm, I'm not it's just they're part of that organization and it helps you get your channel bigger but it's not working out so I'm gonna try and kill my contract with them because well they're enforcing ads on my channel, which I don't want. I don't want ads on my channel. It's incredibly annoying. And from what I've read and seen, they try to put like overlay ads, unskippable ads, some skippable ads, and ads all over the channel. It's just not benefiting me in any way. So I'm going through the right of Patreon. So check that out if you're interested. And in the future, I will be having giveaways and stuff through Patreon. Patreon members will be getting stuff. So that will be quite beneficial but also something I can't forget to mention I have a key for a fractured space to give away now there was a guy who commented and he was going to get the prize but because he hasn't replied within 24 hours someone else who is interested in playing the game for free will get a steam code which you can as long as you don't own the game then you can have it so comment down below if you want the key and I'll see you next time guys don't forget to like subscribe and of course, as always, hope you're doing well, and I will see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Good day, loyal citizens of the Empire. Today, the Emperor has employed a system that will allow you to support the latest Imperial endeavors. Click the link below to support a safer and brighter future for every citizen of the Empire.